Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday. Hi, this is Liz again, and I'm coming to you live from Dubai, United Arab Emirates. So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of you who have been following our page. Thank you so much for your time and your positive comments on, on this Go Live series. I hope you guys are having a great start of the week. Hi, Riley. Thank you for watching. So we are again back to another episode of this Go Live series, particularly the Happiness Project series. So if you have been following our page, you might know that last week I have started this Go Live series for me to share to you what this Happiness Journey book is about. So have you seen this book? Is this the first time you've seen this book? Hi, Nyar. Good morning. So uh, this is one of my most favorite books of all time. This is The Happiness Project by Gretchen Rubin. And the reason why I love this is because it's very easy to read. It's divided into 12 chapters, one chapter for every month of the year. And within those chapters, there are four topics that uh, she shares her journey on how she was, how she's able to increase her happiness in herself, in her family, in her, in her friends. And these are the same tips that I'm applying in my life. And hopefully you will also find some helpful tips to apply in your families uh, or your personal life as well. So today uh, is the second week of April and her topic is about acknowledging the reality of people's feelings. Okay. Hi, Lynn. Thank you for watching. So the second topic is about the acknowledging the reality of people's feelings. So last week, our topic was about singing in the morning. So how singing in the morning boosts your happiness, how it energizes you, and how it, it of course, reflects your, your mood for the rest of the day. So if you guys have been singing in the morning, following this tip from the last week, let me know if that helped you because it definitely helps me. So again, going back to today's topic is acknowledging the reality of people's feelings. So one more good thing about this book is although the author is taking it from the perspective of a mother and a wife and a full-time uh, previous lawyer and a full-time writer, you can easily follow these tips regardless if you are single, if regardless if you're not yet a parent, or regardless if you don't have kids yet, like for us, right? So, what she's saying here is that sometimes, you know, when people come to us with their emotions, saying they're upset or they're angry or, you know, they're going through some things, our initial reaction is to already give advice like, oh, you should do this, you should try this, uh, don't be sad, it's, it's, going to, uh, it's going to be okay, which is, I think, also fine, right? Because um, majority of us, we try to be compassionate, we try to be understanding. But sometimes that approach doesn't um, apply to everybody, especially for young kids. So uh, the author is saying that from her experience, the satisfaction of, um, of, of feeling more happy, uh, there is satisfaction of feeling more happy. My cats keep on appearing on my page. The satisfaction of, appealing, uh, uh, of feeling more happy also comes from the reality of accepting other people's feelings as well. So for example, you know, uh, for my personal example, that like my husband had a, had, a, had a very busy day. It was quite hectic in the office and he was very tired. You know, he, he was slightly down and he's saying to me that, Hal, I'm, I'm tired today. I'm a little upset. So for me, instead of, of telling him, oh, this is going to be okay. You know, you just need to rest and all of that. Sometimes the better approach is saying, oh, you're upset. Okay, tell me why you're upset, you know. That allows that person to, to share her feelings, his or her feelings with you. And that actually helps, it, helps them unburden their emotions, right? So being open to hearing those emotions actually help you also be open to, to your own emotions as well, right? So for example... Uh, Gretchen also listed like her tips on how you can start acknowledging other people's feelings. So one is, for example, for your watch. Uh, hi, Jill. Thank you for watching. I hope you guys are having a great, uh, a great morning there in PNG. It's morning or noon. It's morning, I think, right? Yeah. So 
her top tips in how to acknowledge other people's feelings is number one, write it down or remember it. Say for your child, for example, if your child keeps, uh, if your child is prone to, you know, of course, feeling down and feeling upset over small things, you know, remember that the next time it happens, you already are familiar with that feeling, right? Um, second thing is don't feel like as if you have to say anything, right? Sometimes they just need to vent out. Some people just need to let their emotions out, but that doesn't mean they want your advice they want your opinion they just want somebody to listen right and that's and that's a different perspective to it right the second uh, the third thing is actually stop saying no or stop i think some parents would resonate with this you know instead of uh, saying to your child when when he or she is crying stop crying or stop grumbling or you know stop doing this or stop or stop doing that you know Sometimes it's better from a different perspective to say, okay, he or she is acting like this. Why do I think she's acting like this or he's acting like this, you know? If you're thinking from the, from the perspective of that person, if you are putting yourself in that person's shoes, then you would also relate to that emotion. And I think that would also give you an idea how to, how to deal with it, right? And sometimes, uh, for example, um, my husband, my husband would say that you know, uh, no, I don't want to go out this weekend because he's tired, for example. And I would want to go out because I want to go to the beach, perhaps, or I would want to to meet up some friends. But if I say, if I say out loud, if I say to him like, okay, don't want to go out this weekend, and then it would sink into me that okay, maybe he's tired, maybe he just wants to laze around, maybe he just wants to spend time with me, you know? So there are different things that, there are different perspectives to situations, right? And the author, Gretchen, actually finds this tip very helpful, especially to young kids, you know? Instead of saying no, say it like maybe yes, but in a different way, okay? Um, the fourth tip is wave your magic wand in the sense that, you know, you would, you would the, the, the reason for this is you would want to Tell to that person that if I have a magic wand, if I can do anything, then I would do this for you, right? So that also uh, mention, that also helps them uh, feel that you would want to accommodate what they want to do if you would if you can do if you can do it, right? And the fifth and the final topic, the fifth and final tip she said is that admit that a task is difficult. So for example, your child is. Um, giving up tantrums because you know she cannot put a sock on for example put, cannot put your shoes on instead of um, instead of you know saying that oh it's very easy to do you just need to do this and you, you just need to pull up your socks and you just need to uh, roll it maybe and then pull it slightly you know um, you can switch it off by saying you know oh you know I know when I was a kid as well it's very difficult to put on a sock I don't even know how to tie my laces so did you see the change in that perspective, right? So that is actually, that's actually very helpful, especially when managing, when managing young kids. So there's a section here in the book that I would like to, to read. Uh, it says that experts say that denying bad feelings intensifies them. Acknowledging bad feelings allows good feelings to return, right? So this uh again the the whole um topic of this book is about being happier right uh, finding joy in simple things and finding more reasons to be happy so um again this book is not only applicable to those who are parents although the author herself is a parent and a wife i find it also applicable to me as a, as a wife and uh, as a sister as a colleague as a co-worker there are so many things that we can do every day to get us more excited in the morning, especially on a Monday like this, you know, when most of the people are starting work, it's the first working day, but for us here in Dubai, it's the second working day of the week. But you know, some of these tips actually, uh, I find very helpful and useful uh, from singing in the morning, to acknowledging other people's feelings. And how does that make me happy? It makes me happy because I know that I'm accommodating that person's emotions. I'm not putting my emotions on top of his or her emotions. Even if, if, even if sometimes I feel like, you know, oh, there's, not, not, there's nothing to be upset about. There's nothing to be disappointed about. 
me being open to my husband's emotions, for example, allows me to be more loving, allows me to be more compassionate, allows me to be more relatable to his or her emotion. Because, you know, different people have uh, different emotions, right? And different people take different situations differently. So you cannot really expect your emotion to be the same as the other people, other person's emotion, even though it's the same situation, right? So that's our second uh, having step for April. If you like this video, um, let me know in the comments below. Thank you, though. Thank you for all of those who have been watching. Hi, Ate. She's saying acknowledge plus empathize makes a huge difference to others' people's feelings. Very rightly so. Okay, so again, this happiness journey doesn't mean that I'm sad or I'm depressed or even if uh, other people are taking their own happiness journey, it doesn't mean that they, they're, they're sad or they're depressed or they're going something to in their life. I just feel like all of us, anybody of us, can use a little bit more of happiness every day. And this is the aim of this Go Live series. I want to share with you the happiness tips that I really find useful in this happiness project book. I'm going to show it to you once again. The Happiness Project by Gretchen Rubin. Check this out, guys. If this is the first time you've, see, you've seen this and you're enjoying the content, please continue to follow me on this page. Uh, I'm going live on this topic every Monday morning. Well, morning here in the UAE. And I hope you find some added value that you can also apply in your personal life, in your family life, so you can also take your happiness to the next level. Okay? Hi, Jill. Thank you for watching. Very inspiring. Yes, I'm super inspired by this book. So that's all for now. Have a great Monday, guys. Uh, as always, you know, stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourselves and your loved ones, and God bless you all. Bye.